Hello and welcome to the Turnheads podcast, the podcast that brings you actionable tips, industry insights and employment journey examples to help you start your dream career in the creative industries. I'm your host, Sam Fairbrother, a professional graphic designer, mentor and founder of junior talent platform Turnheads.com. On today's episode, I'll be talking to a huge graphic design hero of mine, Garrick Ham. I'll be discovering how he started his impressive career, what he looks for in a junior designer, and what piece of advice he would give to his younger self. So let's get started. Welcome, Garrick. Thank you so much for being here. Not at all. That's great. It's great. Great pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on. So you've obviously had a really awesome career so far, uh, but I wanted to kind of start off by going right back to the beginning. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, just asking you basically, um, if you had anyone right at the start where you kind of grew up or in your family, um, yep. who had sort of an influence on you to and, and kind of guided you into the creative industry in any way? Um, no to really the creative industry, um, not until I got to sort of college, but um, my, my background is that I'm a Somerset boy. Um, you know, I, I know bird song better than m- most people that I meet and most people in my studio can't believe that I can recognize a bird song. Um, you know, they test me and I always pass. Um, so I grew up in Somerset and I was lucky enough and my dad was a helicopter engineer. He built helicopters and my mum worked in sort of fashion and retail and was, has a, um, Italian heritage. So she's got a certain amount of style and a certain amount of position and a certain amount of hot headness to her that I don't have, but my daughter does have. Um, so it was a combination of an engineer trying to work out how something works, but also with someone who was meticulous about putting things together and uh, wouldn't settle for no and had a particular sense of style. So actually when I think about the two of them coming together, that kind of makes a, a designer really um, so, but I, I, I was lucky enough. My dad used to sit me down, and I, I was dyslexic as a kid, and I was still am. Um, hence the reason why we're doing this rather than me writing it out, um, <laughs> which would which would be laughable. Um, so, so I was very hot wired for images and not for the written word, and um, therefore, you know, academically wise, I, I did struggle a bit and my old man used to sit me down, who was particularly bright, and he would just help me with ideas uh, on posters and things that I was doing. And I used to love it. And he used to be so clever at them that I, it, that was what gave me this sort of buzz of understanding how an idea could work. And suddenly you have that sort of eureka moment. Um, and, and to be fair, in the family, it was my sister who said that I should go to art school because she'd already gone to university. She could see that really the only thing I was really any good at was drawing. <laughs> so I think she thought, oh, my God, you know, and she knew the people at the art school. So she said, actually, this is what you need to do. I didn't know art school up until then. And, you know, my father and my grandfather before them were all, engineers so I sort of bucked the the trend through probably her saying you need to go to art school yeah amazing so you so you went to college and you studied a creative kind of subject at college. yeah yeah, yeah well I did I did art school at Yeovil um, for two years which was fantastic um, and um, I think it's a great shame that the art, art foundation isn't what it used to be um, and that would be a a beef that we can probably come on to later because I think it was so important for me. And then I went on to um, Somerset College of Arts to do graphic design. So what were your, um, what were your experiences in, in kind of learning the whole design process? What were your kind of main um, takeaways, would you say, from your education experience? From uh, well, from my education, um, my education was probably sort of short and unremarkable. Really, um, I knew that I had to get a certain amount of O levels to get into art school, um, and that's what I did work towards, and that's what I got. Luckily, um, but I think you know, for me, the education is there to find out what you are good at, what you love, 
you know, and yes, you do know to know, need to read and write and you do need to know maths and you do need to know a certain amount of that. And maybe that's what makes, you know, makes you tick. Yeah. Um, but really, for me, education was about a working out how to get on with people, how to navigate around people that might be your teacher or the headmaster or that later goes on to be your lecturer or, or the photography, you know, lecturer that you need to work with. You know, it was a sort of school was a learning curve of people and and how to get on with it and and also just trying to find something that you want to get out of bed for and want to make a not a career of because I wasn't thinking of that or that just something that I just love doing yeah and did you do any kind of freelance work or any kind of placements yeah no no I did I did I did freelance I didn't do freelance I did um I used to do all the college invites and all of that sort of stuff and wedding invites and all of that. And people always used to say, oh, you could get a really good job at this. You could choose, choose, choose do this. And I was just, just loved doing it. Um, and then um, it, when I was at Somerset, I was lucky enough to get on well with one of the lecturers who um, worked in a little village. Um, and I ended up working with him in the summer. Um, and he, he used to go to his his house and he, you know, he used to, um, and his name was Neil Lumby and he, he was, a, he, a, he really did take me under his wing, you know, gave me sort of, you know, pads of typo detail pads. He gave me pens and paper. He gave me a folio. He gave me all that stuff that I didn't have. And I used to go to his house and, and help him. And I don't think I was terribly good at helping, but I think he liked having somebody young, enthusiastic uh, around. I don't think I was terribly talented, but I did have enthusiasm. And then he worked at Clark's Shoes um, in street um, one or two days a week. And he managed to get me a sort of internship with them. And that's where I was my first exposure to a proper creative sort of studio and I and I loved it I loved the the people there and even though it was 30 years ago I remember the atmosphere and I remember them coming up with ideas and and involving me in things and and it was run by a guy called Ian Wills who's the father of Ryan Wills who runs Taxi Studio in Bristol and um and it, he was I can still see his cheeky smile now he was so warm and friendly but driven and good and clever and was in dnad and used to win stuff and was with pentagram you know john mcconnell briefing him and their campaigns were great but he was just just a normal person and he was just loved to laugh and he j and i just kind of i suppose wanted to be like him because he was just clever and and just but also nice and warm and charming with it and he was just f funny with it and I just yeah I owe a huge amount of um because he was just kind and and gave me a lot of enthusiasm and encouragement when you know he didn't need to yeah yeah and was that kind of your moment where you thought yeah th this is what I want to do or do you still feel like you're kind of Got on that journey a little bit. Yeah, I definitely thought I, I didn't think I could do it because compared to them, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so, um, and I and I guess actually, I, I am still on that journey. I haven't, you know, I, I I started drawing, you know, at my kitchen table with sort of French curves, drawing sort of you know futuristic cars and stuff, and then got into you know, packaging at Michael Peters uh, and did that for five years and then moved to help my bus boss set up a company with Martin Lambinen and that moved on. And I, I'm, you know, I think as creatives, if I look back on the people that I find inspiring, they're, they're always moving. They're always, you know, they've done that. And that it's not that, that they want to give up what they're doing, but they were always adding things to it. Yeah, yeah. And what would be your um, your advice to students who are at university at the moment, who are in that kind of stage where they're starting to look for work experience and maybe a little bit nervous about it? Are there any kind of tips that you could give them? Um, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I don't think they should be nervous about it. I think that they should, um, you know, I think people will still need youngsters to come along and I still think they do, you know, and I think that they, I think they just need to be sure that they want to do it. 
you know and and i would say grab an annual don't go on the internet because it's forever and once you get on it you'll lose yourself get a design annual or advertising annual look through it look at the work that makes you fizz and you know wish you'd done it or work out how they did it and then you know write the names down of the people that did it and the companies that they did it and then close the book and go actually that's what I want to do I want to do that stuff Um, and if that doesn't you know give you that that feeling then don't do it you know because design and advertising it's a labor it's intensive career and you can't you can't just um you can't just sort of want to think that you want to do it you have to be driven yeah yeah but i think that they shouldn't be nervous i think that they should you know have the um, the, the, the courage to find the people that they want to be with and, uh, and want to work for and then find a route to them. Mm-hmm. And what were your um, your biggest learning curves, do you think, that you went on when you in your first kind of few years in the industry? Yeah, um, well, the first one was actually probably the hardest to take, which was I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Um, to be fair, um, you know, I was a gold, one of the golden boys at college because I, I got a job before college finished. Oh. Um, and, you know, that, that was great. And then I turned up at Michael Peters, which was, you know, full of brilliant designers. And I suddenly realised that I was not in that league. And, um, and I have to say, I'd, I really had a hard time adjusting to that and try and I think the first maybe the first year I had to work out how I could be creative within quite a um not stressful because it was fun and it and it and the people were were lovely but the the stress was brought on by you I had some iconic designers around me and you it was quite frightening so you know I I used to go in on a Sunday was the way I got around it because I could relax and I could just do what I needed to do and not have this fear. And that was one of the ways that I coped with it. And and I still do it now. If I have to come up with something, I don't do it in front of myself, you know, on, on like, you know, a deadline. It doesn't work like that. I try and do it before I try and do it on a walk or a run or mowing the lawn or doing whatever. And, and I think that I re- also realized that how much hard work it was, that you know we used to do i suddenly realized that that i got in one morning I, I didn't put my clock back and i got in that i thought was on time but i was an hour early and i realized that the studio was half already full so when i used to get in at sort of you know nine o'clock thinking i was half an hour early it wasn't that good you know most people were already there at eight <laughs> <laughs> and then you know and you know my boss didn't go until about eight so it was a it was an eight it was a 12 hour day but you know that I, I realize now that that's what I needed to understand and to move up and I think that's one of the biggest difficulties that perhaps you know the as I did the, the when you come out of college you suddenly realize you know, it's, it's not that easy, you know, it's, it's labor intensive and you, you know, you, you do have to put the hours in. It's like training for anything, running or swimming. It's the same, really. If you want to be, you know, achieve the heights of the stuff and the people around you, you do have to put the time in. Yeah. Hence you need to have the drive and the love to want to do it. I guess. Well, yeah. And that, yeah. And that is, that, that is, that is it. And, you know, and I, that's the one thing, you know, and I, you might touch on that later, but that's the one thing that I can't give, you know, my designers or, or the graduates that come out, I, I can't give them that drive. You know, I can help them make them better designers. I can help give them work that they want to do to make them shine. I can give them all sorts of inroads to, you know, award shows and judging. I can make sure that their career path is going in the direction that they want to go in. And I can help them with, obviously, ideas and making their ideas better and crafted. But, you know, if they don't, if they don't really want to do it, then I can't keep asking people, have you done this and how have you done that? It's not. It's not how I, how I work. You've either done it or you haven't done it. Yeah, yeah. 
So what advice would you give to your younger self? Mm. My younger self, yeah. I, I think the first one would be learn to spell. <laughs> 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 that, yeah, that would have been a that would have been a really good one if someone had pulled me up on that. And I think, yeah, I think I think sort of just relax and it will be all right. And I think that's what I would say to any graduate is just relax. You'll you'll get there if you if you want to get there, it will work itself out. And um, do you have a favourite type of client or project or, or process in, in a project at all? Uh, oh, there's lots of questions in there. Do I have a <laughs> favourite? Uh, I, 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 well, I probably the favourite client is probably the one I'm working on at the moment, you know, or the four that I'm working on at the moment. I tend to be a bit like that. Um, yeah, I love the process. It's not so much the end result, but it is the process that I, you know, I adore. And that's the same with filmmaking. It's it's the people, it's the process along the way. It's those magical moments, those bits that that come from, you know, this idea and that idea, and then suddenly make something new that you know that that's truly magical. Um, and yeah, so it's less about oh, isn't that great at the end? Really, it's about the journey and and the process along the way mm -hmm. and you've won you've, you, I mean you've won an incredible amount of awards over your years uh, in the industry but are there any um, specific kind of times in your career that you're most proud of um yeah I mean first was getting my job at Michael Peters when I went there uh, as for some work experience and he offered me a job um and i you know as like i can say i was a somerset boy so i thought i was staying in somerset so i was just coming from some experience so i didn't realize you know 31 years later i was going to be sat here um and so that is a massive walking on air moment that i'll never forget um and also winning probably our first you know our, our, our first pencil um which uh, well actually any pencil you know we've only won three but any of them have been memorable because the work i think was truly outstanding for us um and also being you know president and chairman of dnad was um, or education chairman um for four years was a, a, a high high point for me yeah awesome um and what made you transition then into more what you're doing now with with film? Um, yeah, that, that I always was interested in film and my sort of dad, again, was quite instrumental in that, that we used to lot, watch a lot of films together and really my early film school was sort of with my dad. And um, I, so I always knew I loved films and I always knew that I, I had an inner want to understand how they work and um then i was lucky enough to but just by chance to to go with my ex-boss glenn tutsell um and he'd start his new company with martin lambinen who at the time was had well, done you know bbc one channel four and probably is still you know the master or um or, or of sort of um, tv or brand um, brand idents and so I got to work with Martin. I got to work with the directors um, and I was sort of a junior director to one of them. And, and that's where I realized that you could not only come up with an idea, but you could make it move. You could light it, you could score it, you could have sound effects. And suddenly a bike that I was on that had sort of one speed suddenly had five. And then I was just like, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. And that, that was really the sort of bug really. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the next section, I guess, is about employability. That yes. I talk to you about. Sure. Um, so, what do you look for in a junior designer? Um, junior designer, I think, you know, in, in our particular place, I think that we look for, for, or I look for somebody who is quite versatile because we have a versatile, you know, client base. I think now, even more so, I think that's not bad advice given you know being a flexible designer or creative is probably a good idea you know we've had to be as a design agency more flexible because there isn't so much of one thing going around 
Um, and also clients want, you know, us to be able to handle more of their brand. And, and if I pedal back to 15 years, I was always obsessed with not giving one bit of the idea to somebody else to carry on and possibly not take it in the right direction. So it was always not because I just wanted to do it all, but because I just wanted to keep the idea the same. And um, so I think, you know, flexibility, flexibility within your portfolio i think that you i over always said that you only need really about eight pieces of really strong pieces of work in your in your folio and i think if you're in doubt about anything in your folio then you need to take it out um it's in a bit of advice that that i didn't heed myself um and i remember when i got my job um with, with glenn tutsell who was very complimentary about my you know about my book um, he just said at the end, you know what, but you need to take this piece of work out. And it, it, and it always stuck with me, just says, you know what, I kind of see you in a different light because you put that piece in. So, um, and I, my lecturer was, you know, in two minds about it. And, you know, I didn't really listen to him, if I'm really fair. Um, so, you know, don't, don't put stuff in that you're doubtful, you know, eight pieces, but they need to be really strong. And I would, you know, have a, piece of print but have a piece of work that shows that you can really handle and craft typography and i think for us you know i need people that or at least have the um at least have the want to understand it you know and i realize now that the the design that that the courses don't necessarily i don't think polish or finish designers as well as as they might have done back 30 years ago. And I'm more than happy to help them. And my designers are more than happy to help them with the crafting side, but you've got a need, you've got to show that you want to sit there and do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, do, you know, don't waffle too much about, you know, if you on an interview, don't waffle too much about the brief because, you know, we're used to looking at creative work I don't need a 10 minute intro. I can get it. You know, it just needs to be very simple. This is what we were asked to do, you know, and, you know, because otherwise by the time you finish talking about it, I'll be on another page. Um, but, you know, and, and try and the, my big thing that I try and help students with is if you've come up with an idea and it's singular and it's just one thing, you know, spend the weekends making it bigger. You know, if you've got a good idea, then actually make it into a brand rather than a piece of packaging or make it into, a, you know, a piece of packaging if it's an identity or, a, you know, or a piece of animation or, you know, so that you can show how you can grow an idea. But I think so ideas are important. I think craft is important. And, um, you know, and I would I always really like to look for something that is extra in a folio and it might not be in the folio it just might be something that you've done and we had a chap that i hired from not an amazing college and his his portfolio was pretty good um and he was delightful but he made worlds inside of matchboxes that was the stuff that he did at the weekends and then he used to film them and as soon as i saw that yes i saw his folio and he ticked all those boxes and you know it, you know your folio is like your apprenticeship you can do it you know you can paint if you were an old you know master and then you need something like that that makes me go okay this guy on a saturday and sunday is driven and that's that's what i need i need that beating heart because that is what's going to drive you and your career along yeah and is there anything that you look for specifically during the interview process as well kind of how people present their work and how they present themselves? Um, no, uh, not really. Just try and be natural and try and be yourself and, and, you know, don't stress about meeting who you're meeting, you know, in the end, they're the same as you and me, you know, they're probably like eggs, chips and beans down the cafe once in a while, like everybody else, you know, they're, they, you know, they're, they're normal. And I think if I look back on the, you know, the, what I would say the sort of iconic, people or designers that I've worked with like Martin Laminan, he was just normal. 
you know, and I might have been frightened of, I mean, I met him when I was 10 years experience, so I might have been seriously frightened of meeting him on my first, you know, on my first day. But I think, you know, be as natural, be as, you know, as, as relaxed as possible and also engage with them and like you would get engaged with your friend and the pub, you know, about questions and ask them about stuff and almost it, not interrogate them, but almost interview them as much as they're interviewing you about, you know, what are they working on and what's interesting. And, you know, and I know that feels like, Oh, I couldn't say that, but I think, I think that I'm saying that you can, and you should, you know, you should be, you know, as, as relaxed as possible and, and, and really do your homework, you know, and, and that means understand the person that sat in front of you, what has she or he done what has their company done? And there is no excuse for turning up to an interview with not knowing that homework with the internet as it is. You know, you can spend an hour Googling it and you need to know that. And if you don't, then, you know, you that's going to come across, you know, because in that conversation, they might say something about something and that is your opportunity for you to go, oh yeah, well, like you did on that job. Because in the end, what I love is, Somebody wants to work for us. Somebody wants to work for me. And when I ask the question, where do you want to work? The answer is here. It might not be, you know, you might have four or five. I understand there is, but don't go, well, I kind of like um, such and such and I kind of like them. It, yeah, you can like them. But in the end, you know, it's there's only one place to work and that's the place that you're doing the placement. At. Yeah, yeah. We were that's what I would you. say. Yeah, you're you're going to be investing in them, aren't you? If you take them on, so you you want to know they're not just going to move on after a year. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that that is definitely. A, and also, if you, yeah, I, I think try and be as relaxed as possible in, in an interview and just see them as normal people, and and that's why I think doing your homework helps because you go in knowing a bit about them and and. It's a bit like doing a bit of revision. You feel a bit more confident about the test because, okay, yeah, no, no, I've done a bit about that and I know a bit about my folio and I'm not going to waffle on a lot about it. I'm just going to say, this was the brief. This is what I came up with, you know, and, and, you know, and get them to talk about it at the end. You know, that's what I like to do is run through it and say, I like this piece. This is good. I'm not so sure about this one. Maybe you could look at this or, you know, and, tr you know, and try and get, that out of them you know while you're there is which bit would you you know would you think that I could do better what bit of advice could you do to, to to give me to to help that you know and get them to come out of themselves because they'll like to do that <laughs> you know? and, and you know and I always say you know I did a little when I was in DNAD's education days, I did a little booklet about how to get a job in design. And, you know, one of them, I don't know where it is now, it's a PDF somewhere, but one of them was, you know, get a couple of names out of people within that interview. So, you know, say, okay, obviously I want to work here, but I also interested in, you know, this company or that company, you know, do you, do you know, do you know them? Because if you can get an email address from that, person and you can email them directly you are going to cut out months of work and you just open that email by saying you know I was good enough to go in and see Garrick and he sort of thought you know he recommended that you know that I should give you an email um can I come in and see you and I bet nine times out of ten that that person will say yeah no sure yeah well, when are you around so you know don't leave I say don't leave the interview without a couple of names or at least say actually, is it okay that I email you, you know, afterwards, because you're obviously a bit busy now, but afterwards, and maybe there's a couple of names that, that you know, that you could give me or, 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 or some intros. Because, you know, like we said to start, people want to help, people want to, you know, and we have had countless um, um, people come in on placements that, you know, that have gone to other really good, interesting places, not necessarily just through us, but, you know, just by saying, OK, well, why don't you try them? Or I've got a friend who's a designer there. You know, you have to, you know, use or try and use their network as well. Yeah, that's a really good tip. 
Um, yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. Um, I got most of my work placements through freelancers because they've got their ears. Ah, yeah. yeah, that's cunning. Yeah. Yeah. See, so, yeah, how, how, did, how did you know freelancers though? Just from, I would be at one studio doing a work placement and I'd just get chatting to them. Um, and um, ask if they knew in the other studios who were looking or if there was another intern coming to the end of their kind of stint there and yeah that's that's kind of how I got my job so I yeah I definitely kind of relate to that one <laughs> yeah, clever very good very good yeah you're ahead of me on that with the inter- with the uh, the freelancers <laughs> hadn't thought of that <laughs> so what would you say um I guess I'm more of kind of a software skills and uh kind of soft skills as well really but um are there any particular skills that you think people need to have by the time they graduate to kind of fit into the studio environment um well no only the only the obvious ones i I think they just need a i think it's helpful if they've got one one skill that is that they're they're, they're possibly biased on you know whether that's a you know whether it's print and setting out you know documents and books or you know brochures or whether it's after effects and you know moving image or whether it's a bit of cinema three you know cinema 4d or or, or something that sort of elevates them a bit um you know probably one of the last people that we took on as a from a work placement point of view in a graduate, you know, um, she had a really good diverse portfolio, but she had a bias in, in moving image. And, you know, I, I needed a designer or to become a designer that could help me and move us on in that direction. Um, and that helped her, that helped her differentiate herself from the rest. Right. Um, and, and it's just born out of some, uh, Oops, lost you there for a second. Uh, my battery. Um, she, you know, that's just born out of again going back to the drive. It's a bit like, well, I was sort of driven to to push this forward, push that area forward a bit more. So, um, you know, don't just do the don't just do the standard. I would suggest, you know, have have something that you really that you love and you want to specialize in. So obviously, things are pretty upside down at the moment um with coronavirus um do you have any specific advice you'd like to give to to graduates right now anything they can be doing in the meantime until things start getting a bit back to normal um yeah i mean i just have a bit of faith that it will come back to normal and you know we you know in 2008 and 2009 you know we had some really bad recessions and you know i know that there were you know plenty of young graduates that didn't get a job for probably two years um and i'm not saying that that's the case now because it's not there are people hiring and you know and there are studios you know that are busy we're really busy at the moment um but i think i think it will come i think it will come back and have you know um belief that it will do and just if you're not in placements um you know still do your network still try and get emails to people and still try and get there's no reason why you know I can't be looking at your portfolio I did a portfolio thing for a university I don't know a couple of months ago you know and it's a welcome change from you know you know design work or or whatever the issues that I've got to to deal with uh, uh, the WMH and it is also you know I want to help and people still want to help. So I would, you know, use that time that you're indoors to get your folio sharp. Is there stuff that, you know, that you could be doing that is better? Have I done homework? You know, get yourself a book or a folder together with it all in, you know, and, you know, use that time to 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 make sure that you're prepared and, you know, and yeah, and have faith that it, it will come back. And Because in the end, you know, the graduates and the youngsters are the lifeline of our business. We need them, you know, as much as they need us, if not more, we do. You know, they bring enthusiasm, they bring, you know, new ways of doing it. They they bring everything that we probably, as we get older, lose. Um, so they're vital and they're really important and, and they need to know that. Yeah. So on that note, what would you, what advice would you give to companies who are maybe considering taking interns on for the first time? 
I think that, um, well, A, I think they, they need to pay them, you know, and I think that I can't believe that people still do. Um, uh, that that hor horrors me. Um, you know, the world is an expensive place um, and to try and get into work and out of work and all of that, you know, if you haven't got, you know, a, an infrastructure of money behind you that's cutting out an awful lot of talented people that just can't afford to do it so you need to pay them you know and care for them and make sure they know what their um what their role is so you know sit them down and tell them you know don't get annoyed with them in four or five days time if if they're not doing what you thought that they were going to be doing if you want them to be making tea every day ask them that that's what you might need to do that's not just because we're asking the junior, everybody makes tea, you know? So, you know, that's just, you know, and if, you know, before you go at night, just ask if anybody needs in our hand, you know, don't disappear out the door at 5.31 just because that's the time that you went to be finishing because you're not going to get a job like that, you know, be enthusiastic and, and just, you know, most of the times you will be able to go, but if someone is stuck and they're on a pitch and you don't know it, the last thing that they, they you want to hear is, well, where's the graduate or oh, gone, you know? And so, you know, just give them those parameters and also sit down at the end of the week and just go, well, these are the things that I think you've done well. These are the things you could do a bit better. You know, be, have an open relationship with them. And that's probably with someone, you know, like yourself you know, that would do that. And, um, and you know, look after them, you know, because they're pretty nervous about being in that situation. You know, and if you've got an intern around the place, then speak to them, you know, and make, you know, and say hi to them at the, you know, the uh, the, the kitchen. I often catch them out because they often don't know who I am. <laughs> so I might be chin wagging away with them. And then, then, then like a day later, so they'll go, oh, yeah, I didn't realise. Yeah, OK, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's, you know, and to be honest, Martin Laminen sort of taught me that skill that, you know, he would just talk, talk to all of the youngsters that come in and just put them at ease. And I think that's, that that's, I think, what, you know, that, that, we, that we should do. We have to put ourselves in that, that situation, our, their situation ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we've all been there, haven't we? We've all been mm. the graduate or the junior or the mm. whatever. So, yeah. As you say, yeah. we're all people. We're all just the same when we go yeah, home. Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are indeed. Yeah. So what do you think the the creative industries um, and, and creative education do you think could be doing to help more young people into creative careers? Um, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I think that... Um, and you might be able to sort of point that out that, that, that this might be in place, but sort of an apprenticeship where the government, you know, does pick up maybe half of the the, um, the initial fee or picks up on the placement to, to give and help encourage, you know, industry to be able to afford to take somebody on to give them that leg up. Because in the end, I mean, probably probably, you know, all, well, all of the graduate, all of the juniors that we've, you know, we've ever had really have been on work placement, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that, you know, that's the sort of truth of it is that, you know, we, we've got to try and help youngsters get into that placement scenario or a six month apprenticeship where the government help subsidise that by I don't know twenty five percent or something to help encourage the, the youngsters sort of coming in. I mean, I think within education, I think that I would really say that there's there needs to be just less students, you know, in classes. And I think that you know I don't think the students necessarily. This isn't so much a, an industry thing. This is an educational thing or government thing. Is I just don't think they're getting um, the the tuition that they could get or should get. And I don't think they have enough time in the studio. I don't think they have enough time in the college. Um, you know, I've got a niece who's doing an art foundation course and, you know, they're in there two days a week. You know, this is nonsense. You know, it's an art foundation. It's an apprenticeship. You need to be there five days a week. Well, how are you going to do printmaking and, you know, ceramics and, you know, lino cutting at home? You know, it's... and 
and the same when you get into you know higher education and you you know you're into you know uh, a degree you know you need to be around your lecturers and i think that that's you know that there's, there's too many people in the, in the classroom for the lecturers to go around and it's um i think it is it is showing it is telling and and it's not you know it's that's not the you know that's not the students fault at all um i just think that there that there should be a change or there could be a change in that in, to get back to having more proper um you know where in the end you need to learn from your master and that is you know that's your lecturer and you need to be in and around them as much as you can yeah yeah absolutely no i definitely agree with that yeah um so the last question i wanted to ask you was what are your hopes for the creative industries post covid I, I i hope that you know with the new invigorated sort of spring or summer that will come out that people will um, want to embrace creativity um, and I think clients will hopefully want to be a bit braver and realize that actually within this sort of time indoors um, they've had a bit of reflection in that the, there might be a, a different better more creative way of answering all sorts of hosts of problems not just necessarily graphic design problems and I think that that yeah they need to be braver and they really need to realize that the UK is really good at that we're really good at producing creatives even though I'm talking about the the, the colleges that, that could be slightly run differently I still think that we're really high wired into making great creatives and that's naturally what the UK does and I think that we um you know, I think that they need to, you know, not support that, but to grab hold of that and use that for their businesses um, and use that to differentiate their business and not follow the herd and, and not do the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I've really, really enjoyed ah. this. And yeah, lots and lots of fantastic tips and insights there. So yeah, well, thank you again so much for uh, giving up your time to speak to me today. Not at all, no, it's been good, we've enjoyed it.